Hi friends, I'm here to read today chapter 9 of A Boy Called Bat. Our chapter title is Open Door Baby Cakes Policy. Mr. Grayson was a good teacher for lots of reasons. He let kids eat snacks at their desk if they were hungry. He didn't make students ask permission to go to the bathroom. He didn't believe in making people apologize. You can't make someone be sorry, he always said. And he believed in class pets. That's just how we put it. I believe in class pets, he had said on the first day of class. Then he introduced them to Baby Cakes, the class rabbit. Baby Cakes, a white Angora bunny that looked like a giant fluff ball, lived in a pen in the back of the room near the bookshelves. It was a big pen with a gate. If anyone ever needs to cuddle, Mr. Grayson had said, Baby Cakes is there for you. And that was the thing that made Mr. Grayson the best teacher Bat had ever had, his open door Baby Cakes policy, which meant that any time a kid needed to cuddle, he or she could go visit Baby Cakes. No permission needed, no questions asked. Baby Cakes liked carrots and apples and put up with cuddling. Babe, I'm sorry, Bat knew the rabbit liked treats better than kids, but he also knew that Baby Cakes was smart enough to realize that the two often went together. The thing about Mr. Grayson's open door Baby Cakes policy was that none of the kids wanted to ruin it by overusing it. It was Baby Cakes, I'm sorry, Bat was Baby Cakes' most frequent visitor. Israel visited the second most often and then probably Jenny was the third. A couple of months ago, Israel had given Bat a drawing he'd done of Baby Cakes. It was pretty good. Bat usually tried to visit Baby Cakes during recess or lunch, when a visit wouldn't mean leaving a group time. But today, he didn't think he could wait until recess, maybe because he missed the baby skunk so much. When Mr. Grayson had everyone pull out the money game, payday, that they, off, that they played on Fridays, Bat slipped away from his table and headed to the back of the room. Today, Baby Cakes wasn't sleeping. She was just sitting in her favorite spot on top of the plastic hutch where she slept. She looked like white cotton candy. Bat sat close to Baby Cakes and put his hand on her back just to let her know he was there. He didn't want to startle her. Break into groups of four, Mr. Grayson said. Choose, the, choose a banker and pay everyone $200. For a moment, Bat thought maybe Mr. Grayson was going to let him skip the game and just hang out with baby cakes. But then he said, Bat, five minutes. Bat didn't want to play payday. He didn't want to join the class in five minutes, but the open door baby cakes policy didn't mean it was okay to skip stuff that the class was doing. It was one of those unspoken rules that mom was always talking about, those things that people are supposed to know without having to be told. Bat hated unspoken rules, but he loved the open door baby cakes policy. So when five minutes later, Mr. Gr Mr. Grayson said, Okay, Bat, time's up. Bat reluctantly scooted Baby Cakes off his lap where he had set her and rejoined the class. The games were all arranged. Jenny Pearson had dealt out $200 for Bat. Luca, Bat saw, had returned from the bathroom with red-rimmed eyes. She was in a different group. Ready? Jenny asked. I guess, said Bat and he sat in the empty seat between Jenny and Raymond. Across from him, Corey rolled the dice. Bat sighed. It was going to be a long day. Hi again, friends. Chapter 10 of A Boy Called Bat is a very long day. Bat was right. It was a long day. 
The rain that had been threatening came, and after they ate lunch, the students pulled on rain gear to splash in puddles. Bat did not like to get wet. He didn't like it at all. It made his clothes feel sticky and itchy and uncomfortable. Mr. Grayson knew that Bat didn't like to get wet, so even though the saw wet school philosophy said that students should go outside rain or shine or snow, he said, Bat, would you like to spend recess helping me clean baby cakes enclosure? Yes, said Bat. Mr. Grayson got a trash bag and Bat scooped the old straw into it. Then they laid out a fresh batch of straw. It smelled like summertime and sunshine. Baby Cakes hopped over to the straw and sniffed it. She looks happy, Mr. Grayson said. She looks exactly the same as she always does, Bat answered. Mr. Grayson laughed. Grown-ups were always laughing at things that Bat didn't think were funny, but it didn't bother Bat very much when Mr. Grayson did it. Julio, a fourth grader that everyone said was a natural athlete, came into the classroom. Mr. Grayson, he said, Principal Martinez wants to know if you're still going to teach yoga. Sure, sure, Mr. Grayson said. Tell her I'm all ready to start. Then he said, Julio, I think you've grown a foot since the last time I saw you. Julio shrugged. Not that much, he said, but I've grown an inch since winter break. I'm not surprised, Mr. Grayson said. That was three months ago. Bat thought about time as he followed Mr. Grayson to the yoga room and as he sat on his mat in the butterfly pose. Three months ago, he guessed, could be a little bit of time or a really long time, depending on who you were. For instance, a monarch butterfly born in the summer lives only about six weeks, so four months would feel like forever. But a monarch butterfly born in the winter might live for eight months, so that four months would be just half its life. And if you were a boy with a skunk kit that you were only allowed to keep for one month, time was sure to pass much, much too quickly. Bat considered telling Mr. Grayson about the life cycle of the monarch butterfly, but the teacher was busy unlacing his orange high tops and getting ready to lead the group in yoga. He decided he would talk about monarch butterflies with Mr. Grayson later. But the right later never happened. After yoga, they went back to the room for reading circle. After reading circle, they worked on their volcano projects with which Bat had not been looking forward to. Groups of four kids had had to work together to build a volcano. Mr. Grayson called it collaborative art. Bat did not like collaboration. He liked to do things himself. That way, if something didn't turn out the way he wanted it to, there was no one else to be mad at. And if he wanted to take it apart and start over, no one could tell him not to. But Mr. Grayson wouldn't let Bat be a group of one. The problem was that no one else in the group seemed to care as much as Bat did. Three times before 2.45, when class was finally over for the day, Bat's group said, Mr. Grayson, Bat won't let us help. I don't need help, Bat told Jenny when she complained for a second time. It's a group project, she said. You have to let us help. Israel, who was in Bat's group, kept asking him all kinds of annoying questions like, Hey Bat, do you think lava is red enough? Or do you think the lava, lava is red enough? And Bat, can you pass me the paste? Bat ignored the lava question, but about the paste he said, Glue works better than paste. The paste gets all weird and flaky when it dries. Okay, said Israel, pass me the glue then. I'm using the glue, Bat said. Things would go much more smoothly, Bat thought, if the other kids would stop asking questions and interfering and just let him get on with the job. 
By the time Miss Kiko rang the end of day bell for, from the hallway, Bat's left eye felt twitchy. All he wanted to do was climb into Mom's car and go home to his own room. But when he walked outside, he didn't see Mom's burgundy station wagon. Instead, he saw Dad's yellow sports car, and he remembered with a heavy sigh that today was every other Friday, and he wouldn't get to see his own room or the baby kit for three long days. If Bat were a mayfly, he wouldn't even live that long. I hope you're enjoying A Boy Called Bat, friends. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.